There we go. Hey everyone, how are you? It's Andy Lyons here, and welcome to another fun and fact filled episode of the Loving and Lasting Show. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, Chief Passion Curator for BringBackDesire.com, where I share everything you're going to need to get out of your head and back into bed. I'm also the host of the Loving and Lasting Radio Show and Blog Talk Radio, and there, as well as here on Google Plus every week, it's my sincere pleasure and honor to bring you stimulating and arousing conversation with some of the best love experts in the industry. We're here to help you deepen the love, deepen the connection, and deepen the sexual pleasure in your life. Week after week, month after month, year after year. You know, I am all about helping folks understand that it's a true human part of why we're here. The sensual pleasure, the sexual excitement that we share, whether it's with ourselves or with our beloved, it's a key ingredient and a core ingredient, especially if you want to have a relationship stay loving and lasting for your whole life. And I know that sometimes it can be an uncomfortable conversation for folks because really, who talks about this in polite company? I do. <laughs> but I really, I just really feel like a purpose to help folks understand you can have sensational sex with the body you have, the partner you have, and the circumstances that you have. So today, we're talking about how age does not diminish desire, attitude does. So thank goodness we have in the room sharing the sexy state of mind love today, the oh so wonderful Susan Lee Miller. And I'm going to bring her up here and have her wave for you. Hi, darling. Hello, Andy. How are you? I'm doing great. Where are you hailing from? I am hailing from New Jersey. Oh, see. Yeah. New Jersey. My, husband, my husband's from New Jersey. Delicious people <laughs> from New Jersey, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, what a kind. <laughs> yeah, everyone, I want to read you quickly a background about Susan, but I'm going to keep the uh, camera focused on her gorgeous face while I read, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Here's her background. Susan spent a good portion of her adult life in a marriage that ended in divorce after 20 plus years. At 41, Susan saw an ad for massage therapy school, signed up and became a licensed massage therapist using the gift of touch to help hundreds of clients get out of pain. Susan uses a holistic approach to all of her work, which is what I truly and deeply appreciate about her. And in fact, she truly believes that any transformation must be made at the mind, body and spirit level. In 2011, Susan became a life coach and combined her lifelong study of female sexuality, massage, body work, Reiki, and chakra energy healing with coaching to help women explore their sexual selves and create sensual, passionate, and vibrant lives. And Susan's a smarty pants, everybody. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism from New York University, where she received her education not only from the classroom, but from the unique and quirky Greenwich Village where she lived. So today, Susan is a single mom living, as she said earlier, in New Jersey with her daughter, and she's loving, living a sexy, sensual life. Welcome. Thank you, Andy. Wow. <laughs> what do I say now? <laughs> hey, that was a fun intro to read, I just that have to say. Really fun. Oh, I sound really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Susan, what I'd love to know is not everybody wakes up one day and goes, wow, I, I want to help somebody be more tuned in and turned on with their sensual, sexy self. So, uh, what called you to do this, go that direction, other than you know, the massage and the importance right. of touch? Right. Well, uh, and, I, and I write about this, is I was a very repressed young woman. Um, I was a very, very late bloomer. I was an introvert and extremely shy, and I my sexual experiences didn't start to later in life. Um, fast forward a little bit, I got married, and I was married for 20 plus years, but it was really, there was no sexual communication, and there was no... 
I wasn't in touch with myself as a woman. I didn't feel turned on. And a lot of that was coming from me, from inside of me. And when uh, my marriage ended and I got divorced, I mean, I didn't know anything about sensuality, how to be sensual. And when I got divorced, I decided that I was on this journey of self-discovery and really discovering who I was, my sexual energy, my sexuality. How could I tap into that? I wanted to be turned on. I wanted to be tuned into who I was. So that's really what started it, and I've been exploring it ever since and evolving and changing. Yeah, I love that, especially when um, you you had years of you know being in the desert, so to speak. Yes, with your partner. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a dear friend who, you know, same thing, when he came out of his marriage of years and years of not having great sex, it was hard. He went and he, fortunately, he read some great books to help yeah. him know how to pleasure a woman, which is just delicious about him. And I think there are other women who, too, come out of these 20 years or, you know, long periods of time being in a touch-free and sexuality-free uh, relationship, and they want more. They're feeling it inside them. Is that what you've experienced as well? Absolutely. And I also think that, you know, we are not given the tools to talk about sex. Yeah. We're not given the tools to have discussions with our partners, with anybody, and we feel self-conscious about it, and we're embarrassed. So even if we are having issues with it, we don't know where to turn. You go to your, your doctor and they're embarrassed. They don't bring up the subject. They don't want to talk about it with you. They don't want to give you information. Mm -hmm. So you might be in this partnership and you feel like, you know, where do I turn? Where do I get information? Or I'm so embarrassed. Does anybody feel this way? Right? Is anybody having these issues? So, uh, you know, right. absolutely, right? Yeah. yeah and, and we're not born with this information in our heads and we're certainly shown it through the educational system how the sperm meets the egg and babies are created. Right, right. But nobody tells you that the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings and is just there for pleasure and every woman is different and they definitely don't t tell you that only 25 percent of women can have an orgasm from penetration right. alone. The rest of us will better figure it out or we will be orgasm free. So it's so important and that's what I love about your work Susan is how you have have specific conversations and tools and programs and simple strategies for women who can privately and comfortably come to a trusted source like you and learn about their bodies because each one of us goddesses are different right. and we need to find out what works for us. So let's talk about something that uh, women can have at any age due to any reason whether it's medication or birth control mm -hmm. pills or whatever perimenopause, menopause, and that is low desire. What causes right. that? There are so many reasons for low desire, and you mentioned a lot of them. I mean, you know, we it, it's as we get in, our hormones change, so as we're in perimenopause and then we're in menopause, I'm, post -men, I'm considered postmenopausal. Um, you know, it can be uh, that we are on medication. I mean, that is a big thing, especially as we age. But when I did a survey of women, I got a big a response to low desire that the answer was stress mm -hmm. our lives are stressful we're multitasking we have this laundry list of things to do so our minds are are just all over the place and we're so stressed out that we don't even feel our bodies we don't even take you know that that old cliche stop and smell the roses we're, we're not stopping to smell <laughs> the roses we're not tasting our food we're not listening to anything we're just moving forward at this fast pace and we're really stressed out and that was the number one thing stress and time which I consider to be one thing because if you're stressed out and you're multitasking you don't have time or you haven't made time. That's well, you know, I, I recently saw Arianna Huffington interviewed with Charlie Rose mm. about her book Thrive, and that was one of her key points was that you know, men, the, how their biology and physiology is made, they are meant to be stressed out all the time, and their body can handle it. They, you know, it's just part of their DNA for most guys. Mm. But for women, we internalize our stress. And so it takes a greater toll on our bodies. And somewhere along the way, I know personally when I think it happened, which was during the dot-com boom, the glorification of being busy and right. working 24-7 happened. And really, I'm, I'm leading a movement called the, you know, 
the, the anti twenty four seven modality. It's the seven twenty four. Yeah, the, you know, it just doesn't work. It doesn't help you, and you're proving nothing to anybody with that. But it and it does. It takes a toll. And of course, when you fall into bed at night, the only thing calling to you is sleep. And when you wake up in the middle of the night, the urge has nothing to do with sex. <laughs> <laughs> we wear it as a badge of courage. Look what I've right. done. I've done this. I have ten things on my list, and I've checked off seven of them. And uh, you know, especially in the part of the country in the tri-state area that I live, mm -hmm. uh, everybody is moving at such a fast pace, and it's it pace, and it seems that you know that's just the, that's become the norm. So it is, right. I think, very detrimental for for but for men and women. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love anybody to, who's out there watching this, please join me in the, oh, I don't know, I did a few things today, movement. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, absolutely. <laughs> let's, let's start that. Um, you know, also, one of the things, too, is that we have a perception about aging, and mm -hmm. especially women, like, okay, don't need to do that anymore, when in reality, stirring up our second chakra is all about birthing creative ideas versus birthing babies at a certain point. What are your thoughts around that, Susan? I think as we age, it's actually an amazing time to be creative for reinvention because if you have children, your children are leaving the nest. Mm -hmm. You are now either you know uh, single or with your partner, but it's an amazing time to say, okay, what about me? It's always about somebody else. We're always throwing out any, our energy toward somebody else and toward making other people happy and 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 you know giving our energy away. And now it's about taking it in and keeping it there. And you said something really important: that second chakra energy, right? I call it you know the feminine space or the pelvic bowl where this feminine energy resides and it's so important to connect with that because right it now it's not for procreation it's for creation what can you create and you can see it that women you know in their 50s and 60s are creating businesses they're creating new relationships new lives for themselves so i really am a proponent of how how great you know how great this part of your life can be and how you can reinvent it and how to get in touch with that source, that source of energy to do that. That's right. Because I'm Yeah, exactly. And then you talk a lot about making a sexual investment of energy. What does that mean? A sexual investment of energy is to invest in your pleasure. Right, as women, we are taught, I think from and I've been working on I've been working actually on a blog piece uh, for for next week in that you know we we've been taught that pleasure is when we help others when we nurture others giving to others is pleasurable and that is pleasurable right yeah. but we have been taught that pleasure just for pleasure's sake is not good that we should feel guilty about it right so when yeah. we're not doing that laundry list we feel guilty right even if you go get a massage or you go you know you you go get a manicure you're still thinking oh, okay I gotta get home because I've got to do something and I've got to do something for someone so I'm talking about investing in yourself now in your own pleasure what pleasures you what what turns you on you know what makes you just feel you know just feel that light inside you turn on just because you are it's a birthright right, right? Yeah, and once you start thinking about that and start asking the question, it's amazing how the neuro linguistic programming in your brain starts searching, going, well, what does light you up? So if you're feeling, you know, really downtrodden and, and maybe you've got a beautiful home and maybe you're getting a massage every week right. and your nails done and you've got financial support and you're happy with your kids and your spouse is a darling, but you're still sitting there feeling something's missing. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I would call that that you're and that this also sometimes sounds cliche but your purpose your mission you know why are you here what just send you over the moon yeah. because we spend so much of our life burying that right, right. And, it's oh, finding it. and so what I do you know with clients is excavate that right it's mm -hmm. your turn now yeah. to, to find out you know what, what why you're here um, you know I'm before we continue on this conversation, I just want to say hello to the few of the folks who are watching us live. And I just want to have a hat tip off to uh, Crystal here because, bless her heart, she's part of the 
I love God it. God love you. I think that's awesome. <laughs> and then Kim, I thank you so much for joining us in the uh, glorification of the the forget the glorification of being busy. Um, it's so true. We really need to support each other, the sisters, so to speak, the goddesses, in being more divinely feminine. And as Susan was just take, saying there, allowing for others to do for us. And uh, it, especially in a household like I have with, with plenty of men, I have two sons <laughs> and boys, and there's no lifting, there's no opening doors if anybody's around. And uh, it really sets a nice tone. You know, it's part of my gift to myself of receiving. Yes. Um, how is one's sexuality a vehicle for personal growth? I want to bring that up right now because I, I, how does that work? I don't understand. Your sexual energy, it is my belief, your sexual mm -hmm. energy, your life force energy, your chi, your prana, because these are all words that are tossed around and we're taught about. I believe it's the same thing. So this sexual energy that is the energy of creation, that is who you are, right? It's how you walk in the world. So when we're not in touch with our sexual energy or we, we just force it down, we're not being ourselves in the world, right? We're not... Ah. We're not moving and and interacting and doing things that turn us on and we mm -hmm. want to be turned on right right Otherwise, life is not the same well and I think too when you dive into uh, exploring your sensuality and owning all of your sexuality your lusty right. nature that inner temptress and you tap into that it is an opportunity to heal some wounds along the way. Yes. Reframe some events that may have happened. And you know, given you know what women have gone through through centuries, I don't doubt that we're carrying in our DNA pool some pretty tragic, awful things that may have happened, not necessarily to us, but generationally. And it's important to also heal that, let it go, and perhaps dissolve some of the shame that we may have picked up over the mm. years. What do you think about that? I definitely believe as women we carry we carry in ourselves, in our DNA, mm -hmm. everything that has happened to women before us. There's there's no doubt about that. And definitely the shame. I mean, I, I just know how I felt as a woman, the shame about, you know, talking about my body parts. Right. My, you know, listen, we, we just recently have come to be able to say vulva, right? right. I mean, before then you know, it was always the vagina. So we just became able to, some of us, to right. be able to because we have such shame about that. Yeah, so, and it, 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 it cracks me up because everybody's out getting a Brazilian. Ouch! Yeah. <laughs> and they're all talking about it, but, but you know, can we take it to a step further? What does that mean? And, uh, you know, is, is it just your esthetician that's touching you down there? Or are you, right. you know, exploring yourself in a way? So talk to us about creating an erotic mindset. What does that mean? An erotic mindset is, there's so many components to, co to creating an erotic mindset, but it's really opening up your mind to your sexuality. And I, I have to say that I think that the first thing creating erotic mindset is pleasuring yourself, is saying, hey, this is okay for me to do. And uh, it's okay for me to get to know my body, right? I want right. to know what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And the only way I can do that is to touch myself, to pleasure myself. Right. And I think that that, that is the core, right? to say yes to my own pleasure and that just creates this this you know it it lets those erotic juices start <laughs> to flow and and I think that is so key in a relationship I know I talk about this a lot but gals you've got to find out what turns you on and especially if it's been a long time since you've been able to have an orgasm it can become a situation where you get into bed with your darling man and you know this is important to him men love to win <laughs> and that means they love to score and they love to make sure their darlings are happy and I know you want that for him and of course you want that for you so it does sometimes take alone time and perhaps really good lubricant really good toys things like that to help you discover so that and hey, you can do it together if you feel comfortable enough and have you know evolved to a point where you feel you know the vulnerability with your darling um, of course this is why Susan I'm all about really well written erotic romance literature because I find that the authors have done their homework so perhaps if you're feeling too shy, you can at least point to a section in the in the story and go, 
I'm liking that. <laughs> Let's explore that. But it really in the bedroom is where men take direction really, really well. They do want to make you happy. Healthy men want to see their darlings tuned in, turned on, and they want to be quote responsible for that. They want to be contributing yeah. to that pleasure. It just nothing makes them happier. Period. End of story. And a lot of times when we we shut that part of ourselves down and don't allow them that opportunity. That's when you start hearing getting the wham bam, thank you, ma'am, and the going to sleep afterwards, and you're wondering why is this happening? Well, it, it could be that you're not engaging as well in, in understanding your own erotic and sexual nature. Up, uh, Susan, you do a lot of wonderful things on your website. Share with some of the with the folks some of the wonderful programs that you have that they can dive right into. Absolutely. Uh, well, I have my once a month call, which is seven ways to boost your desire and empower yourself in the bedroom. And that's where I really go through the ways to, to boost your desire because you know what? At some point in everybody's life, I mean, it happens to men too, but at some point in every woman's life, I mean, you just, you know, you need, you need to work on, on, on getting the juices flowing. So I have that once a month call and that is on Mondays and you can go to my website and you can find out about that and then I have Love Your Sexy Life. It's a it's a 90 day coaching program where you work with me and I give you tools and I give you strategies. Nice. It's not enough, you know, I, I liken it to say, you know, we can make a plan but if you don't have any tools, if you don't have strategies to to work on it, then you're kind of left with this plan and then it just falls to it. It nothing happens. So and, and we do have to work on it, right? I right. think this notion that that all of this is going to happen just naturally, <laughs> and that that happens at seventeen, eighteen, when our hormones are flying, <laughs> and we could just look at somebody across the room, and it's like, whoa, you could feel the energy. But you know, as we age, as we get older, as we have stress, that 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 just doesn't happen anymore. So we're going to have to work it. So I have that ninety day program. Wonderful. And you can you can also um, sign up for a discover your inner sexy um, no cost call with me, and we can chat and see if we'd be a fit to work together. Yeah, I love that, and I'll have all of the links to Susan. I mean, in the event invite, the links are there, but I'll put it in the archives as well and on YouTube, so you can quickly take a peek, give Susan a call, chat with her. I, I just want to bring up a few more comments, Susan, because I love you. I love this with Kim. I, you know, Kim is into the whole uh, lunchtime scene, and she goes, <laughs> "No wonder she likes super cells so much." <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so funny, Kim. And then our our goddess of of love here, Crystal. You know, she's a juicing for life gal. You would love her, Susan, and her work. And and she's right. You know, there are things that could be holding you back from having you know full body orgasms and things like that. And it's good to know and and explore. And then, of course, one of our favorites from your neck of the woods is the ageless and, and sexy goddess Sheila Pearl. Um, she is wonderful, and she's always singing. You know, you know how you can it's it's how you can be ageless and sexy. Period. She's wonderful, so I'm always thrilled to see folks in the comment area, and so Absolutely. glad you're here. And then bringing Kim back again, she has a quick question for us, which is. Seems to me like we've been gradually groomed to do rather than be. I love that, Kim. Any thoughts on how we can evolve and how to overcome that need to do? You know, that real task oriented. That's such a great right. question. Well, you know, we're task oriented and we're goal oriented. Mm -hmm. And part of my, I mean, you know, part of my strategies is, you know, I'm a long time meditator. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, about being is about being still and it's about feeling, right? We feel we be, we think we do. So right. we have to kind of turn off the thinking and the doing and the feeling and the being. And that's actually where sensuality comes into it as well, right? Sensuality yeah. is about feeling, right? With all of our senses. And then we just be, but, and, and you know, the meditation and there's so many different kinds of meditation. So, you know, if you're one of those that says, I can't sit, I can't turn off my mind, neither can I, but <laughs> there's all different kinds of meditation that, that work too. And Hey, you know, cooking's a meditation. I love to cook because she mentioned the bowl, the lunch, the salad. It's a meditation too. <laughs> <laughs> Eating could be a meditation. That's right. That's right. And you brought up a really good point too. And a lot of folks like to practice sacred sexuality, which is when they get into the bedroom, they warm up for a long period of time through just some beautiful stroking, looking at each other in each other's eyes, 
uh, bringing their breath together, calling in the divine, absolutely, and releasing. And and you know, Kim, it's such a good question that you mentioned. What happens with our beautiful female brains is we're so gosh darn, darn good at multitasking and thinking about twenty things at once. I mean, you know, when a man says he's going to bed. He gets up and he goes to bed. Good night, darling. <laughs> That's it, right? We go, oh, I'm going to go to bed now, honey. And he goes, good night, sweetheart. And he thinks you're going to go to bed, but we all know we don't. We stop in the kitchen and do some chores, maybe fold some laundry, pay some bills on the way. And we eventually get to bed. So I think a lot of time in our being as women is because we have our eyes on everything. We see right. so much and we're on top of so much that we forget to remember to breathe and to be. I just love that question, Kim. Thank you so much. Any, fantastic, yeah. Any other thoughts that you have, Susan, on that being? I think I love the question because this is something that I have, you know, I, I have spent a lot of time practicing for myself because I'm just like everybody else out there doing a hundred things and, and uh, you know, having a lot of responsibilities. I love what you said, which was the breath. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did a, a week-long uh, tantric um, a event a workshop with Margot Anand, which wow. uh, she is responsible for bringing Tantra to the West, and it was just really fascinating. And so, what I would say to people is to to explore all those type of things. I'm the type of person, so when I cook, I take a little here, I take a little there, I take a little here, right? <laughs> and that's how I kind of I learn about a lot about these different ways of connecting with yourself and connecting with a partner. And then I take what I like from here and I take what I like from there. But I definitely think that that sacred um, sexuality, sensuality, you know, right. just, just being still and holding hands. Wow. How how great is just feeling your partner's hands. And I, you know, as a as a massage therapist, let me tell you something. These are your best tools. Yes, they are. <laughs> Touch Touch is a beautiful thing. Oh my God, profound. I have plenty of massage therapists who have people come to them who might be widowed or in between relationships mm. or even in a relationship where they're never touched. And they, they have that massage for the sense of touch, right, Susan? Absolutely. I can't tell you because I think I've mentioned to you I've worked on over 10,000 people and because I've done a lot of medical massage I've worked on a lot of people who've had cancer who've been sick who've been end stage you know all of that and that the touch was so profound so you know, I tell people you know in relationship we forget that you can have sex with very little touch Right. We need to touch each other, right? We yeah. need to feel with our hands, feel that person's energy, tune into them. That's the luscious, right. alive part of it. And you know, by creating a time where you're going to have sensual pleasure with your darling, it gives you days in advance to start flirting, to start getting our minds on mm -hmm. to sex. And I think that's so important, especially for folks who are going through what I call the fertility dance, Susan, which yeah. is when they're you know, their life is based on ovulation. And I didn't have, you know, I didn't start getting pregnant until I was after the age of 35. And we had a loss in each trimester. Mm. So basically, I was pregnant for seven years. Wow. And, uh, and boy, you know, I could be in a sales meeting, a manager's meeting, a board meeting, you know, at ridiculous times a day and go, oh, I gotta go have sex. See you bye. But I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want it to be something for God and country, and I didn't want it to be like a petri experiment. The legs up, yeah, right. Rain, you know, and and the pressure is awful. Anybody who's gone through fertility, you know, you have a loss every month when you get your period. It's just how it is. It's awful. Mm. And so when you get to love making, you know, to create your bundle of joy. It can become such a pressure-filled moment, so that's why I really encourage everybody to get into a sexy state of mind, read some really hot erotic romance literature, remember why you love to have great sex, and make it about you know lighting some candles, being with your darling, touching and holding and loving, and uh, and and absolutely you know having a climactic experience too, and creating it just. It just takes the pressure and the stress off something that it can be a very difficult time for couples. Any thoughts on that, Susan? I would say that, you know, it's about connection and it's also about having fun. You know, we're, it's you know, it's about having fun, connecting. Hey, good fun. point. I think sometimes we we end laughing, laughing at ourselves, laughing at our situation. I have one of those senses of humor, so you know, it can be a little <laughs> off and a little, a little dark. Exactly. 
right, is that I try to find humor in a lot of those situations and not take ourselves so seriously and just really it is it is about fun because, you know, when we're having sex, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't always work. <laughs> right, and, and sometimes we don't have the outcome that we'd like. But if we have fun. Yeah, but rather than faking it, which I don't Absolutely believe not. because it's a huge betrayal for the guys, everyone. I know it's you want to make them happy. It, yeah. what, is it, what did you say, Susan? I said it's disempowering. It's yeah. disempowering not only for, for your partner, but it's disempowering for you because you're not being authentic. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. You, you yeah. say you know, next, next time hey, it's is not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and laugh. And also, if, you're, if your husband or darling tends to be the type that you know rolls over and passes out because, I mean, really, the, they've given up everything. <laughs> All <laughs> the testosterone is gone. Just remind him that your cave woman brain needs cuddling and because mm -hmm. it really by being held and loved afterwards it, it releases some beautiful hormones in the female brain makes Absolutely. us feel safe and loved and again it's important to me darling if, if you spend a few minutes snuggling for my cave woman brain because mm -hmm. you know we are of course powerful and amazing creatures but after we've been so vulnerable in having really wonderful, sacred, deeply connected and intimate sexuality, you know, and playful sex. Mm -hmm. The gals need some holding and cuddling and snuggling, right, Susan? Absolutely. I mean, you said something that I, I, is so key, and I've, I've talked about this with my partner a lot, is the vulnerability. I mean, for both people, when you're sexual, you're vulnerable. But if you just think about women's parts, right, and how right. we're both, we are vulnerable. We're open right in a very physical way and so after we make love after we have sex you know we want to know that we have you know kind of a protection or these arms yes. around us or something yes. that means, I'm still here I didn't leave you so that's really important and we have to communicate that right 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 because again this is what I need yeah men do not value mind reading like we do okay <laughs> no, no, but, but remember we're intuitive and that's yes. the gift that women have yes. and I think that that men don't have as much I don't want to say there aren't intuitive mm -hmm. men but that's the thing so we need to say I want this this right. is what I want as part of a and you know what a lot of men they're willing to oblige yeah <laughs> absolutely because your happiness is very important That's to right. healthy man. <laughs> oh, what a wonderful, wonderful conversation we've had. Our time is up today. I just want to get some last-minute thoughts from Susan. And what do you have to say for folks? I just, you know, it's never too late to start evolving and finding out about your sexual self. So explore your sexuality and to learn how to say yes to pleasure and to find your sensual side. It's never too, it's never too late. Spoken from a late bloomer. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. And for all the viewers, thank you so much for tuning in and turning on. I know the conversations that I have are NFSW, not or <laughs> NSFW, not suitable for work. And so I and I, I appreciate that you take the time to to listen and gather information. And I hope that we've inspired you to dig deeper and connect more deeply not only with your beloved, but with your beloved self. She or he needs you to love, love, love yourself always on every level. I'm so thrilled that Susan Lee Miller was able to join us today. Be sure to check out her seven ways to boost your desire and empower yourself in the bedroom. The next one is May 12th at 12 noon. I've got the registration link here in the event invite as well as on the in the archives. And she's always happy to do a discovery phone call. That way you can find out if she a fit for you. And, okay. uh, and oh, oh, may I oh, say go ahead. Oh, and also if you go on to my website and you sign up for the six simple strategies for a sexy yeah. state of mind and also my newsletter and I blog every week. Yay! And I really would love to get one of your blogs on, on Bring Back Desire. That Absolutely. would be a lot. Please, you know, just love repurpose it. it. It would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, again, I'll see you guys next week on the Loving and Lasting Show. Thank you very much for joining me. And remember to keep deepening the love keep deepening the intimacy, and keep deepening the sexual connection with your beloved self and your beloved partner. Andy Lyons here giving you a big mwah, and I'll see you next week. Have a great week.